Hi, what's up? We're in the next pod. Please go check out the previous pod to gauge your bearings. Um, all right. Uh, I was busy talking about the idolatry of South Africa and what it is that I am being shown. Uh, what I woke up to understand last night, like from the dreams that I had pretty much last night, I saw I had a... And it was a dream. No, it wasn't a dream. It was like a vision of a rapture. Like I just saw a whole bunch of people going up in the sky, like just yeah, shooting up. And then I heard mockers and scoffers, scoffers and mockers, mockers and scoffers speaking about mockers and scoffers in the last days. How it is that currently we're being mocked and scoffed about? You know the rapture happening, but at the same time, I keep on seeing fulfilled promise, like fulfilled answered prayer, coming to me. Like I prayed and I asked the Lord for husband, children, that whole katoot. A life, a career. I had okay. Let me tell you what I I woke up having dreamt about. Well, actually, you know I, that that season in between sleeping, guys. Like when just when you're waking up, like just when you're you know basically rising out of sleep, it is extremely pop populated with prophecy if you've got a spiritual gifting like that in between dream and waking space i get a lot in that time just before waking up and i saw in that space while i was just but not really getting up i saw myself opening a box that had an eye not an iphone what is this thing a uh, cup all right let me just share all right a, a box that had uh what do they call it man what's the name of it in a laptop a notebook what you know i apple's laptops i had an apple laptop i was trying to give it the proper name that they give it but really proper if i don't know i don't know okay i was opening this box and i had been bought it wasn't even i did not purchase it i didn't it wasn't from my own money it's not like i had a salary it's not like i had a a thriving career or whatever or a thriving money ties channel enough to be able to afford to buy myself a new laptop finally but like i had been bought it like it it was a gift that was awarded me by someone that bought me a laptop and it was an iphone notepad notebook whatever it was a laptop yeah i you not iphone yeah yeah apple i've been wanting it and i was un unwrapping it a a in a gift box and i was very pleased to have it because my computer is giving me grief um but i was still sitting on this bed in that i was not yet restored to what it is that i need to be restored to to be okay speaking of that new laptop right that i'm speaking about right now there was a time about a couple of months ago maybe seven ten months ago a year i don't know mm, i had this amazing dream that for me was just so exciting because it was confirmation that we are at the end that we're at the rapture that we are about to get taken I was in an airport and I was, we were all, I was in this airport. There were only people rocking bright white clothes in it. They were wearing regular clothing. So it was not like they were in robes or whatever, like heavenly robes, but their clothes were white. So if, if they were wearing this top, it was pure white. If they were wearing sneakers, they were pure white. If they were wearing sweatpants, pure white. If they were wearing jeans, if they were white jeans, everybody was wearing white in this joint. And it was bustling, very, very busy. People were waiting in this airport lounge area or lobby or check-in point we were waiting the check-in place was not yet open it was not yet open do you understand what i'm saying of course like if you've traveled you would know that you can't just check in at any time there's a time when the check-in staff chills at their post and then says okay this flight boarding to wherever is about to check in there were a whole bunch of people rocking white in this very bustling airport just sitting around and the check-in joint was not yet open and we were however very busy like everybody was busy everybody was busy there was a lot like they were working at different places and all of us were waiting for the check-in staff to open and say okay it's time to check in and i in particular was sitting on the floor like you know the way that you would find some young backpackers in a in a in an airport uh just chilling in some funny little corner on the floor typing on a laptop because all the like places where you can sit are like occupied and taken they're not sitting at a restaurant or whatever they're just like on the floor uh with their feet crossed just working on their laptops i was on the floor like that and i noticed very starkly that i had an apple laptop that i was working on 
I was busy like everybody else but I was sitting on the floor because there was not enough space for me to sit on some chairs because other people were sitting on some chairs and it, like I said everybody that was there in the, that white out in those white outfits were busy they were up and down they were working they were I was on my laptop everybody else was doing stuff they were doing stuff they were not just merely queuing yeah uh when i woke up from that i was like yo god what in the world did that mean and of course i understood it i understood it for what it was an airport means the thing that's gonna take us out of here we're gonna leave however in the run-up to us leaving what are we doing we are working we are being fruitful we are multiplying we are making disciples of all nations the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few so we were working to bring more people into the airport it was not yet open however and i had this dream about a year ago it, the, the check-in point was not yet open a year ago but we were at the airport to check in you know that when you've got a flight scheduled you don't go you, you you don't leave your house an hour before the flight leaves you will miss the flight you leave your house three hours four hours before the flight leaves and you are at the airport two hours even before uh what is this like the check-in point opens you you have lunch you make double sure that you don't miss your flight you will eat lunch you will do whatever and then you will very freely and very in a, in a relaxed uh, posture go and check in finally when it is time you make sure you don't miss your flight if you're responsible that's what's good and that's how we were it's like we had arrived like two hours early or three hours early and it was yet to open for us but we were busy working at the same time like i said that was a year ago and at that time and in that dream i had an apple laptop and i dreamt about that apple laptop last night i dreamt about opening it and uh, opening the package that that it came in the box that it came in and i was sitting on this bed of mine in these conditions of squalor that i'm living in with my new laptop and i was like whoa god whoa and and again that laptop was bought for me it was purchased for me i did not save money and buy it it was bought for me that that's what I, I dreamt about last night what that says is that god sees i guess my challenges my struggles with my computer he sees that i am challenged by how slow it is and everything and yet i'm working profusely like a dog and he showed me basically fulfilled dreams fulfilled prayer where it is that he will enable me to work faster but i will not yet be by the time i get my laptop even out of this environment however i am working very hard to get out of this environment that was the first dream i then saw uh, another like dream in the space of like coming out of sleep and sleeping coming out of sleep and sleeping coming out yeah i saw an empty apartment with like um wooden frames for windows and uh like gray walls the walls were it was like a pastel gray color and the, the 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 frames were painted white the kind of quaint little establishment pretty much that i would really like like likely rent somewhere where i would likely be happy to move into it, it just looked like the kind of apartment that and it had wooden floors like um yeah wooden floors the kind of apartment that i would be like okay this is this is cute it's quaint it's beautiful it's mine as I, I want it i want it i'll take it type thing and i was sitting on the floor of this apartment it was empty yet to be furnished but i was chained in this apartment to the burglar proofing like there was a what do you call this there were handcuffs on my uh, around me and they were chained these handcuffs to the burglar proofing of this house but i was in it however despite being chained to the burglar proofing in this empty apartment i was eating an apple very calm like it's almost as if though i was I could not care less that I was chained. I could not care less that I was incarcerated because I had some like strange trust in that dream that I would get out of these very easily. So I was just eating a fruit. I was just eating an apple while chained to the burglar proofing of an apartment that was mine. And I was sitting on the floor and I was sitting on, on, the, on the floor and the floor was wooden. And I was wearing a very elaborate, beautiful like dress it looked like an elaborate like a, a, a summer dress that had red patterns flowers on it it was extremely fashionable that's what i'm getting at it was very fashionable like high-end fashion couture i was rocking some beautiful floral high-end fashion couture dress sitting on the floor of an apartment where i am chained to the window the burglar proofing of the window eating an apple and i was blasé i was just like very cavalier about my chained condition and when i woke up from that dream i was like 
when I woke up to recall it, I was like, what were you showing me there, God? And I did the mathematics, put two and two together myself. God was showing me at, the, at a time when people are going to be working like dogs to incarcerate you to make sure you don't get what you ask for in prayer. You're going to get it anyway. You're going to get it anyway. You're going to get it anyway. There's basically going to be operating witchcraft that is hard knock against your life to, to basically keep you chained to a grain and yet despite the chains that you're going to be like apparently in because of active practice like witchcraft act actively operating as at that date you're still going to go into your apartment with them still casting spells you're going to be chill eating an apple you're going to uh, be approved for rental in a quaint little establishment and you are going to be able to basically be restored to the way that you like to adorn your body like clothing you're going to be able to shop and buy dresses that you love elaborate couture that you like to put on your body you are going to have a cute quaint apartment and dress as beautifully as you love to dress in a space where it is that people are going to keep on throwing spells at you and despite them throwing them at you you're gonna be okay you're gonna be like proper i was chained to what do you call this i was i was chained to my apartment but i was in it and i was eating an apple and i was dressed very beautifully i was dressed beautifully i remember the dress i remember the boots they were like this the, the dress the color was a sort of like a maroon mixed with cream the 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 pastel the the, the, the the flowers were about maroon in color and the dress in the background was like cream and the shoes the boots that i was wearing were leather and they were also a a, a shade of like um a rusty or orange slash maroon it's just about some bearded guys y'all <laughs> I, I have a thing about fashion. I, I, I really love clothes. I do. But I have not been able to adorn my body because of everything that I'm suffering under right now. So basically, that was God saying, basically, whatever it is that the locust, the palmer worm, the canker worm has consumed, I will restore it to you. You're going to get your love for fashion restored to you. You're going to be able... I told you guys that I wanted to start a fashion a segment of, of my ministry to basically show women modest dress how to dress in christ and be really super fashionable you're gonna get all that i was like oh okay and in that dream i was moving into an apartment i had moved into that apartment by myself there was no man there was no husband so essentially the lord was confirming to me that i'm gonna restore you to independence first before i bring a man along because right now there is so much exploitation of your person based on your poverty that you cannot you are not going to be able to be sufficiently trusting of any man that comes into your space while you are poor while you are still struggling so i am first going to restore you and then only will i bring your husband along i had yet another dream there is this um a beautiful girl on youtube that i follow that does hair content and she did a short where she was showing her wedding day basically and she was rocking this gorgeous gown and she was looking really pretty etc i had a dream of uh, being that girl like instead of it being her in her short it was me i had a dream of a short i had a dream of me being in that short basically displaying my wedding day in a short on youtube like in a short like doing a short covering a whole wedding day i had a dream of me of basically me being that girl and I, like i keep getting these dreams like the past couple of nights they've just been flooding me and i've been concerned i've been worried of course about my life i have been out of my mind uh, well, you know with serious concern over where things are going y'all know i'm working like a dog i keep on getting blocked i keep on getting thwarted i keep on yeah there's just so much going on and with me concerned and freaking out like this god keep, has just been flooding me with all of these dreams flooding me with all of these dreams and uh last night i dreamt about one that apartment with me being incarcerated inside it and then the the i pad iphone opening it and then the dreams with the wedding and the marriage that i have just been getting it like a lot over the past couple of days but i'm not sharing it because like i told you guys that i'm like sarah i'm i laugh you know like hur, hur, hur. i'm laughing like a hard knock at, at what god is showing me concerning especially the prospects for marriage type establishment thing but like i keep getting dreams where it is that i'm doing it i'm doing everything that i have always wanted to do and then this morning just like after i'd woken up this time around i heard a word of knowledge ish my computer is just so slow uh, I, I heard a word of knowledge and the word of knowledge that came to me was abimelech's judgment abimelech's judgment abimelech abimelech's judgment who is abimelech i understood it for what it was immediately abimelech is this guy in the old in the old testament in i believe the book of genesis one of the guys that thought sarah was really beautiful and 
pretty much took her into his courtyards while Abraham just stood back and did nothing, uh, claimed that it, he, she was his sister. And then she was like all up in Abimelech's grill. And then God plagued Abimelech for the whole Sarah thing because Abraham was not standing for Sarah. Abraham was not standing for Sarah. So God plagued Abimelech and ultimately Sarah got set free because she was supposed to be the mother of all nations type thing. God rescued Sarah from such events twice she re he rescued sarah from pharaoh he rescued sarah from abimelech both times the men found her excruciatingly beautiful exotically stunning and made a decision that they wanted her while the husband stood back and because he was scared scary pants he made a decision to say nothing and so his wife was essentially taken by the wrong men and god would not have that be the ma maintained status quo um for sarah so he rescued sarah by plaguing the men he rescued sarah by plaguing the men seeing as abraham did not stand up to the occasion and he did not protect his wife he was just trying to be safe in a country where he was sojourning so the lord rescued sarah supernaturally where it is that he plagued abimelech and this morning the holy spirit told me abimelech's judgment is here in other words the men who are holding you hostage even though you belong to somebody else i'm plaguing them and now it's now guys i've had a dream where i got an email I got an email uh, and in the email subject reference box tick thing it, it was written it's time in the reference slot in the email in the email it was written it's time and god is showing me what he means by it's time in piecemeal right little by little he's showing me what he means when he says it's time and he is basically showing me that it's time for basically people to move out the way because your breakthrough is here and among the things that are going to award me breakthrough is the judgment or the plaguing of abimelech or pharaoh basically men that are holding on to a woman that belongs to somebody else i will not be rescued out of this and indeed i have sought the lord's face like no man's business i'm not going to get rescued out of it like a cinderella i'm not going to have a man rock up and take me out from these chains the lord is going to plague the men who feel entitled to me because of my poverty because of the way that i'm suffering he's going to plague them and then I will be restored to Abraham, whoever he is. I will be restored to whoever is supposed to be my, whoever is supposed to be my husband is not going to have played a role in setting me free. That's what the Lord showed me. He will have been a man set apart by God to do the job that he's supposed to do. And if I had not been set free from the clutch of wicked men, this man would not have done anything he would not have raised up to the occasion to fix the status quo he would not have said that's my wife he would not have said no don't take godly girls he would not have fought for me that's what i'm getting at he's gonna have an abrahamic disposition in that he will be awarded a wife that god has set apart for him but like i said he would not have done anything about it he would have been like abraham i don't know if he would have known me in advance but what god is confirming is that i'm not getting rescued out of this by a man and it makes sense because of the fact that i lack trust in that regard I lack trust like in the worst way so god would not ever throw me into a situation that that i find you know capricious a situation that i find precarious a situation that i'm nervous is going to hurt me he's not going to cause me to just take a risk anyway like go out on a limb and just experiment and see if maybe you know this time around a guy's going to be trustworthy god is not going to throw me into the arms of a man when i am so presently untrusting of them i will be rescued by christ so that my emotional climate and my psychological state will, have, will be healthy at the date of meeting this human being and my question with that was god i'm 39 <laughs> Uh, when i'm 39 like i'm 39 i'm turning 40 in august when under heaven am i getting married and gonna start to have the children you have shown me i'm gonna have when i must first get myself out of the situation live in my own apartment wear my own beautiful clothes and then only get married to my husband when am i gonna be pregnant for crying out loud like anyway but you know the biological clock thing it's something that we as women must just give to God because the modern world is very full of pressure when it comes to women in that regard and they write us off after 35 etc so one is to not look at the situation with the eyes of the world but rather with the eyes of Jesus Christ but yeah I dreamt I not dreamt but I got a word of knowledge where the Lord was telling me Abimelech okay is judge is under judgment and Abimelech is not just one man in my life my ex-boyfriend is Abimelech uh, this guy from America is a Bimelech. Some men I don't even know that have come at me with roofies on the internet. I call it roofies, Corvella. Testing, love spells, whatnot on me. They're a Bimelech. And God has shown me that a Bimelech is under judgment. And I do believe that that is ubiquitous for women at large. Like, it's time. Genago.
it is time for us to be set free from all of these men into their gorobela. And so with God telling me that Abimelech is about to be judged and with God telling me that I'm about to get my apartment, with God also telling me that I'm going to get a laptop even before I move out from my mother's house and it's going to be bought for me by somebody instead of me purchasing it myself, with God telling me all of these things, it says that there is some kind of semblance of repentance on the ground due to exhaustion on the part of people that keep on experimenting with all different kinds of other things perhaps they had they are now spirit fatigued spirit fatigued in other words they're they're exhausted with testing so many spirits and so they finally then are going back to jesus and it is only in returning to christ that uh, god will heal a country and there is no way that there would be a restoration to god in south africa without it being felt without it being felt because the glory of god in delivering his saints and the country at large will have to be ornate otherwise it will not be uh, done at all like god literally goes big or he goes home that's what i'm getting at so it would have to take something shocking extreme astronomical gargantuan i don't know to cause south africa to realize that i cannot be mixing christ with ancestors what has it done for me so far what is what is going on i the lord showed me scoffers and mockers he keeps showing me the rapture but literally right alongside the rapture i see a future so i don't know what is gonna happen it may or may not be everything but hey guys i don't know I don't know what to trust in, I don't know what to believe in, I don't know what to long for, what to desire, what to anticipate. I just, I do not know what's coming between those two or if it's both. But if it's both, then the rapture can't possibly be like tomorrow or day after or, a, or, or next year. But I am not, I'm not trying to, uh, what do you call this thing? Um, no one knows the day or the hour, I, exactly, my point. Uh, the way that I've suffered so much at the hands of wicked men and women I have only ever imagined that the rapture is the only way out of this. Some pockets. But then it's just been too taxing for me to hold on to just that because it's risky to hold on to nothing but the hope of getting reaped in the sky in Christ. But what I think maybe the Lord is showing me is that we are at the end of the end of the end. And our calculations as to what the end of the end of the end is are of course off on the scale in comparison to God. But it is close enough for it to be within our lifetimes our existing present lifetimes like if you are a woman my age 39 and you are given what will be called according to the standards of this world a long life by god you will see the rapture in your lifetime so maybe like at 59 of my 59 of my 69 of my 70 maybe even my 49 y'all i do not know but i have seen both that's what i'm getting at i've seen both I've seen both. I've seen, I see every, both, both the end of all things as we know it, but also a future. And I know, I don't know what to run with. And you know, the, the content that I watch on online is so taxing. Some of it in term, just in terms of it explaining what's happening in this world that I just, even though I'm feeling hopeful that maybe I've got a future, ooh, ooh, hey, I'm going to listen to this stuff and I'm like, mm -mm, mm -mm, we, we don't have two years. We don't have a year. We don't even have a week, y'all. The way things are just falling apart, the way that they're falling apart across the world right now, things are looking really bad. The wickedness of this world is intensifying. The global elites are ridiculous. People are, are daft. It's like they're losing their minds. The colorful agenda is sickening the world. It is, ingest it is investing an injection in the bloodstream of the planet at its peril but there are countries that have stood their ground and rejected it like no man's business like the western ideal is being a a excessively rejected by much of africa and lots of asia i spoke about it the other day how it is that it's so hard for me to watch anything american on netflix but i love k-drama because it's clean so the export of filthy culture from america has not been entirely embraced by the whole planet there are things that certain parts of the world are just not doing yet so in going back to my original proclamations will the lord ubiquitously judge everybody that is exhausted from wickedness with the wicked and therefore award the wicked company in their misery will he do that misery loves company and the wicked are presently miserable for their evil. And if we all get thrown into the tribulation now, they will be reprieved. 
the wicked that is they'll be relieved because everybody's going to be in trouble. They can sense their own trouble is coming. And if God judges us all, we all then, they all, they, I will speak this time around as they, because frankly, I'm not going to be part of the tribulation. They all are going to be in the same little pot. I mean, if the Lord raptures the church today, the person that was about to get exposed for being a hard knock prolific devil worshiper and scared about it to a point of investing in a whole bunch of witchcraft to prevent themselves from being exposed. So holding on to their lives and so they're going to lose them. This person is no longer going to be in as much trouble if the rapture happens because there will be all of these things flying around all over the show. There's going to be so much other supernatural activity going on around the show. There's going to be aliens. The whole excuse for why, what happened with the Christians. There's going to be such weird things that it's going to make their... Um, nefarious activity pale in comparison it's gonna look like child's play like the the deeds of those who miserated the global citizenship are gonna pale in comparison to what's now happening it's gonna remove from them it's going to remove it's going to distract from what they did and while the lord does not delight in the death of him who dieth just the fact that they're actively trying to get away with that murder right now like i told you guys that the dreamer the way it is that i was incarcerated in my own apartment there is a desire to maintain a false reputation by the wicked instead of repent. They're recalcitrant, they're stubborn, they're rebellious right now instead of contrite. And when you are not contrite but rebellious in the midst of being busted for sin, all that can happen with you is being finished off in judgment. That's all that can happen. But then it becomes unfair when those that were contrite get put in the same bunch bunch with you. It also becomes unfair when those that were your victims and they did not know that Christ was the only way out because they were yet to be nicely convinced. Because God loves to convince that he is God. He doesn't just merely say, believe man. He, he really does want you to thoroughly study, interrogate, um him he will reward you when you diligently seek him and the process of seeking is one where it is that the lord is awarding you an opportunity to find out that he is god he is happy to humor that conquest so those that are on a conquest to try and find out if at all maybe christ is the only way that are literally five seconds away from being thoroughly convinced that it's the like this is it and then boo they're in the tribulation there is no patience no sloth to anger over there no forbearance essentially no god likeness in that activity if people are grieved by darkness and they are running from pillar to post trying to find a solution for it and they're five seconds away from finding out that Christ is really the only way out, will the Lord just throw them into a tribulation because they took too long to get to that place? He is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. I don't know you guys. I just feel as if though South Africans are tired. They're exhausted with witchcraft. There is no way they're not. Look at our country. There is no way people are not disillusioned by what else must we do then? How in, in the world am I supposed to be okay? And also, there are too many witches, too, that are basically dealing with such hard knock consequences of their actions, ramifications, that they long for better days and they long for their, their lost innocence. That is a contrite spirit. And God says, a broken and a contrite spirit he will not despise. So when people are tired of their sin and when people are exhausted with oppression, that is not the right time to be just throwing them into a tribulation. It's the right time to give them the final answer that they've been ignoring all this time. But if those that are recalcitrant and stubborn trying to hold on to their guns are awarded a tribulation, because for them it's like an award. If they're awarded a tribulation, they then get to escape tribunal. They get to escape judgment, prosecution. They get to escape the fact that, look, it's over. Surrender, down tools, go to prison where you'll get three warm meals every single day in a, in a bed. Like, go to prison instead of be killed. Just surrender or die. These people that stand to surrender and get three warm meals a day, some of them would be benefited by a tribulation where everybody is now going to be on a global prison, on, a, or on some kind of a hotbed that is just ubiquitously slapping everybody across the planet. It, it always just has not made sense to me just based on my own life situation and I know that I'm not the be all and end all, uh, the be all and end all of a final authority of anything okay I am a Christian a servant of God I am not God so my own experiences and my own opinion frankly don't really matter but I get to voice them just based on my own life and all the trauma I'm enduring and all the guilt that I am understanding dwells in the hearts of those that have afflicted me some of them um the the, the burden for the wickedness that they're walking in some of which also are disinterested in coming around and doing better they just want me finished off yeah just based on the observation of that 
just these dynamics that I have explained right now in my own life I am inferring that I am likely not the only one since I'm not special I'm not the only person feeling this and so if I am not the only person feeling this way and if I'm not the only person experiencing these dynamics this burdened state of the country must therefore be ubiquitous it must therefore be general it must therefore belong to everybody or a large percentage of the population meaning that the son of man will come with healing on his wings instead of judge because a people are worn out from their own sin while others want to get away with it so those that want to get away with the sin let them be judged and everybody else receive the healing on the wings of the son of man as he comes the you know the basically christ healing a land because the people were called by his name and they humbled themselves they repented they turned away from their wicked ways and so god healed their land it has to be felt if at all this country will be restored to some kind of a semblance of a normal life but if that's not what's coming then we don't know all i know is that i've been given a prophetic gifting i'm not the final authority i will only get proven indeed truly prophetic if these things come to pass if they don't then i am not to be taken seriously even in the slightest all i know is that i've seen both the rapture or slash the tribulation the entry into that horrible jacob's trouble time but I've also seen me being given everything I need. I've, I've seen, guys, I've seen a future. I've seen uh, kids. I've seen twins, twins from like a first pregnancy, a boy and a girl. I have seen that and understand there are no twins in my family. So that would be a miracle. That would be a miracle. Twins come from where, guys? Is it the woman that has the twins or the man? The, 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 the predisposition for it. The genetic predisposition is it from the guy or the girl i don't know but i've seen two i've seen twins a boy and a girl the boy is the oldest so basically born first um i've seen twins um i've seen an apartment i've seen a wedding gown i've seen a short doing it on youtube sh basically just you know showing my entire wedding day i have seen all that and it, it all just seems to me like it's impossible it can't especially considering i don't have family i don't have like proper people who's gonna be at my wedding like you know what's going on i do not know but from what the lord has shown me i'm first gonna get some kind of a semblance of a normal life before i am married and yet i'm 39 i'm 39 i'm 39 i'm 39 yo i don't understand what's going on a another thing that the lord has shown me long ago he has compared compared me to a colonel colonel saunders you know the guy from kfc the the the, the, the colonel you know how he made his like whole bun like he basically coined kentucky fried chicken in his i think he was in his 50s he was struggling all along he he couldn't quite you know get stuff right that he wanted done with all of his restaurants and whatnot and he only managed to bank big in terms of business when he was already kind of old and god has compared me to that man so me being 39 right now and concerned is is worrisome oh another thing that i've seen so yeah it is yeah because i'm running with the stats of this world another thing that i've seen there is this um couple that i follow on youtube and i already follow them i've, I've watched a, a, a couple of shorts of theirs like you watch one short and then they recommend like two three four five of them and then you end up just watching them it's like it's this black couple in i in the u.s but i believe they're from africa right but they're living in the u.s and they they did a short that, and i think that's what made me watch them again and again and again and again where it is that the woman basically recorded all of her pregnancies they have something like eight or nine kids and she did a short where she recorded all of the pre like all of the pregnancies like bunch them in one short and you just watch the family grow 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 and the oldest one getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger uh, 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 and then like them standing looking like a, a cascaded little staircase or whatever and it, it's it, it was very emotional and touching to watch it and my heart was broken when i was watching it because you know I'm, I'm all devastated about the fact that i don't have any such thing even though it's what i wanted i wanted like lots of kids lots and lots of kids and i had a, again a vision where it is that and i keep getting it over the past couple of days as i'm walking up and down washing dishes whatever where i see myself doing a short like that where it is that i've got like child one child two child three child four over many years and the final short and then after a couple of years you do one short combunching pretty much all of them being born all the way down to the one that is a baby in your arms and then basically showing displaying oh how god has greatly blessed us uh look we're growing we're getting big as a family and i'm like how in the world am i gonna have one after the other after the other after the other after the other i'm 39 now so if at all i'm gonna have my apartment and everything that means that i'm gonna be a, a woman that is in her 40s out here popping babies like she's 23 all throughout the rest of her 20s and early 30s 
ah, is that really gonna be what's going on over here and if guys you know like i said i had these as dreams and visions if that happens all that my prayer is is that it would prove it would serve to essentially vindicate women from being written off as obsolete once they turn 35 because there is a real problem with ageism in this world it's ridiculous and it was never the case in the scriptures where it is that a woman would be considered utterly ruined because of getting to a certain age it was her fertility in whatever years or age that she was in that made her still very viable so continuing to just pop them babies well into your whatevers that's what made a woman young according to the bible but in 2024 after we turn 35 even though we are we look a lot younger now we are much better taken care of we use sunscreen we look better than women of old we do despite everything being just there at our doorstep we've got better medical care at pre at pregnancy we've got so much more to basically cause the world to stop being so ageist against older women and we live in a society in an era where people don't even love or respect the institution of marriage anymore so women are getting married older if at all and when then they get to my age 39 unmarried it's like we're just written off as these like scraps like based on what based on what all these women on the internet that keep on having babies at like 37 8 9 40 41 42 43 44 45 this one woman uh, the others the one other woman was uh, had a baby her first um when she was 52 she's got like a whole youtube channel and the child is growing like swimmingly and what have you naomi campbell is another one that had her babies later on it's like people like for me it's like oh, those pregnancies happened a lot of these women of which without even any help from fertility specialists or whatever they were just fertile and yet they had to tiptoe around their OBGYNs, their gynecologists their obstetricians on some uh I, I was a naughty girl i decided to go in full pregnant at 41 what in the world like why do we have to tiptoe around OBGYNs when we are pregnant at 41 why 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 are we like girls that should get slapped on our wrist for being a bad girl it's just nonsense like it's literally just nonsense if the lord has seen it fit to make you a, a, a wife and a mom at 42 then that's what it is and i feel as if though god almighty did that with me in order to humiliate the norms of the world and and give hope to older women that is just as alive and thriving as the hope that younger women have and it will also cause women to stop settling to stop compromising to stop allowing themselves to just get taken by anything just because they're getting older if at all i am going to be given what it is that i'm seeing in my dreams and in my visions and in the words of knowledge that i'm getting i believe god is likely tidying up the way women are currently thinking because the whole epidemic of marrying occult practitioners men that have lain waste like strewn like cadavers in the street other women in the past the whole epidemic of good girls marrying guys like these is also largely inspired by the fact that they're turning 35 36 37 without having husbands and so they're just taking anything that comes women that used to have standards that used to have quality the women that used to have decisions that they could make in their own strength and capacity are now absolving themselves from making such decisions as these because they're 35 and up i feel as if though god is likely healing that little mental illness because it's a mental illness that's what it is it's a disease in the brain it is a worm that's eating us whole it's creating perforations in the brain that are making us unable to remember what happened yesterday what happened yesterday we had standards yesterday of which being when we were 23 24 25 26 27 and then as soon as you turn 35 all of a sudden you're taking the guy that you would never have even looked at once when you were 24 why is that happening it shouldn't it shouldn't i did that i i nearly married a guy that i would never have looked at when i was 25 that guy from america and god was like over my dead body like literally no it's not happening he rescued me from that situation so when he finally does give me what it is that i asked for in prayer you guys I believe it is, it is just going to be the beginning of God showing that women stop freaking out when you turn 35. Stop freaking out when you turn 30. Stop. I'm God. And I do whatever I please. I'm in the heavens. Stop thinking that you have to down tools on what you expect because it also suggests that there are no men that just like you are waiting on me. You are saying that I, I cannot make men just as patient as you. It's not true. It's a deception and a lie from the pit of hell. There are men who have waited for me, for wives in me for years 
and have not quite met that Rebecca as Isaac and are still single, frustrated, in and of themselves, feeling like, goodness, time is passing. When am I ever going to be a dad? When am I ever going to be a husband? And they're roaming these streets wondering why is it so dry? And yet they're not settling just as you didn't settle. So in the same way that you would pray and hope that your future husband does not finally just take some Jezebel off the shelf because he is now turning 38, so too should you then not allow some abimelech or pharaoh to take you off the shelf because you're 60 as sarah because at the end of the day if abraham is your husband he's your husband he's your husband if isaac is your husband as rebecca he's your husband he's your husband he's your husband if 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 you get my point so i don't know i keep seeing it all i i laugh myself just like sarah i do i laugh on some there's no way under heaven that i am getting what i want in prayer because i'm 39 and i, and I can't stop saying 39 it's just such a big age it's like gong 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 like that board game jumanji and soon i'll be 40 and it's gonna be like gong 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 yeah well thank god that he is the one that protects me from my own mindset sometimes my own mindset the lord has preserved me at 39 he will preserve me at 40 at whatever age but like i said i'm seeing a fork i'm seeing both things both 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 what appears to be diametrically diametrically opposed outcomes for my future either i'm in the sky in heaven or i'm here having babies or both perhaps they're not diametrically opposed perhaps they're not that far apart from each other perhaps both are gonna happen in my lifetime but only time will tell only time will tell but as for this south africa of mine y'all i don't know you you i don't know the the you i don't know yo yo i yo actually i don't know okay like so i don't know south africa i do not know what is going on with you you are a version a fraction of yourself that you never used to be i i just do not know all i know is that at this rate god is gonna take daniel job and noah from out of you because you're using us as human shields let them go fly like birds elsewhere while you deal with your idolatry until you repent you cannot ask God to pray for you when in and of yourself you don't trust in God. You cannot be mixing ancestors, salt, Eastern mysticism, yoga, Buddha, all these things with Jesus. Like you just can't. It how how's it working out for you so far? Look at your country. Look at your country. It would be so sad for me to go and marry a man that's not South African, even though I wanted one. Only because literally there was nobody found in these streets as God scanned his eyes in the periphery that was fit for any of his daughters getting born in this land. It would be so sad, but it would be a reality check. It would be something that lands like a gong in the heart of South Africans to realize that God had to take Garabo out of South Africa to give her a husband because there was no one found in the land 13 years i've been saved consecrated to god and no one stepped up so much so that god compared i guess my husband to abraham more even than isaac because he would have been standoffish and afar when i was enduring sexual harassment by pharaoh and abimelech god himself rescuing me from the hands of tyrannical possessive men that feel entitled to a woman that is far too godly for them given that they're involved in black magic this country is a cesspool guys of darkness there is witchcraft happening in just about every street corner and the extremity of devil worship inside households is making it near and impossible for impossible for people inside families to breathe you've thrown your country awry you have gotten yourselves addicted to this blackness but on Sundays, you're in church. During the week, you go to Bible studies. Like, yo, I, I don't know. I really don't know, South Africa, what it's going to take for you to stop with your idol worship. Perhaps it maybe losses like what I am is what you need. Y'all need to lose your best people. Realize the bleed. The fact that you are being drained of a life to just stop already. It's not working, clearly. Look at how devastated your land is. Stop holding on to this. How are you going to just take in your stride? Nandipa going to prison because of Tabo Best when it's clear that that was witchcraft. That's what's happening to your people. That's how much witchcraft is being practiced in the country. Sober people are being made to throw away the whole futures because people are bewitching them into oblivion. So I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know what it's going to take. That woman clearly did not trust my counsel. She just found me overbearing and heavying to recommend my Jesus to her. She wanted me to pray for her without her praying for herself because she did not trust, not fully anyway, my God. But she knows that I'm only hanging with him only. 
And so if she's not prepared to experiment with Christ onlyism, she wants to go and use somebody that is in Christ only. And if at all her prayers work to set her free, then she's cool because she cannot for the life of her trust, not using other stuff to protect herself from her witchy husband. Until such time that you stop building a golden calf in the wilderness, despite seeing the power of God, you are not going to be set free from the captivity that your country is in. You're playing games in the church. Keep like mampatile. It is not church. Because if it was, this would not be the state of the nation. And people inside that very church would not be bewitching into oblivion their husbands and their wives, their children and their dogs. People would not be walking freely, still smiling, eating pizza, having a chicken mayo sandwich with a cappuccino in the morning for breakfast in the office while bewitching colleagues. They would not be able to stand. If you were truly trampling serpents and scorpions underfoot as a child of God. Men who feel entitled to women that don't want them singing Beyonce's Ring the Alarm. I would be damned if I see another man in your arms. Men like those would be immediately neutralized. The guy in America is on that Ring the Alarm psychopath tip. I'll be damned if any other man marries you. As if though he's in any position to make that decision. And because of my Christ onlyism, I got a vision where I was incarcerated in my own apartment. So I got to a point of being in my own apartment wearing some hard knock expensive couture outfit. But I was in chains because somebody was busy using witchcraft on me. But despite it, I got to my apartment and I got inside that beautiful outfit. I got there, evidencing that in Christ you shatter bonds fetters you're loosed from them and no one can thwart the thing that god wants for you he's the one that has set apart a door that no one can open can close open to at the time that god opens it that's when you go in and nobody can close it no one can shut it so if they want to block you from finding your independence again from getting married from having children it's like i guess i'll be incarcerated next to the hospital bed near the scan for I guess my five month checkup with the OBGYN, you try to block that, but hey, I guess the only disquiet here is that I'm going to be incarcerated on the actual bed that I am having my scan done at, but more than that, really, you can't do it. You can't block the pregnancy, can't block the marriage in the run-up. Sorry, you can't block the marriage that came before. You cannot block the husband from enjoying the wife of his, you know, youth. It's not really youth. I mean, I'm old now, but you get my point. You can't block children from being born, being doted over, loving their mother back, loving their dad back, growing up in the admonition of the Lord. If that's what God will do, you cannot block it. You can't curse those whom God has blessed. And neither can you bless those whom God has cursed. So you can't give yourself as a wicked man, a godly wife, not especially if she's consecrated, prayerful, and full of fasting. If she is like Hannah, always praying, she will ultimately get her son Samuel at the time of Jesus. It's just about waiting on God. No one can prevent it from coming. But those who don't believe lose on the rewards of Jesus Christ. Those who do not believe lose out on the ultimate rewards because they wouldn't trust what Jesus was doing. And it's going to be a painful day for them to watch those who did wait without wavering in their faith. It's going to be so painful for them to watch what they got, because then they will see that had I not compromised, that's where I would be. I feel sorry for women that settled. I feel sorry for men that settled. I do, because this country is so evil that it looked like settling was the right thing to do. It looked as if though if you don't settle, you're going to be left komorajo, you're going to be left behind. You're going to just wither away, rot, be a carcass on the side of the street that's not even collected by the coroners because no one cares about you until it becomes clear that you were in the right place all along. And those that decided to try other stuff, test other things are going to be so regretful, so regretful. Anyway, I was just sharing my sentiments. I didn't even think I would talk here for very long, but I'm here for long. Am I not? I just wanted to share what God is showing me. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I'm out of my mind. Like I can't believe how much I'm working, but I will force a break on myself eventually. I will. Maybe even tonight. I don't know. My prayer is that you will heed the Holy Spirit. To stop being an idolater that's it as for all of these things that i was shown like i said time will tell i hope you've been edified i'm signing out in christ's name crank peace <laughs>